So who's ready for some spookiness? The new Netflix fantasy horror Night Books has arrived. So sit back, get comfortable, and let's get reading. A boy obsessed with scary stories is trapped by an evil witch in her magical apartment, and he must tell a scary story every night in order to stay alive. So I thought this might be a movie similar to Goosebumps, but maybe with just a slightly darker turn. And then when I saw that this was rated TVPG and it was geared towards families, I began to rethink how dark it actually might be. We follow Alex, and he's a kid who's really into horror. His room is covered with posters from slasher films and various horror movies from just a variety of decades. When we meet him, his parents are discussing something that happened to him, but it's kind of vague. But whatever it is, Alex is deeply affected, and then he's destroying his room. He's just tearing posters off the walls and collecting all the stories that he's written into his backpack. He sneaks out of the apartment as he attempts to go down the elevator to the furnace where he can burn his stories. But the elevator goes all wonky and doesn't take him to his desired destination. Alex finds himself in a strange apartment that has Pi sitting out for him and the Lost Boys playing on a TV. And once he goes into the apartment, he's unable to leave. And in quick succession, we're introduced to his captor, a witch played by Kristen Ritter. That's where he finds out that Alex must write a new scary story every day or else the witch will kill him. So no pressure, right? So this is a fairly dark story, especially one that's geared towards families and kids. The aesthetics in this are pretty well done. The apartment is not typical, and it has rooms that are just more spacious than they really should be. And the visuals used to create these, I thought looked really good. One room is this library, and it probably goes up like five or six stories in height. It's complete with these intricately designed winding staircases, and then filled with an immense amount of books. And I love that the higher we go with the books, the more dusty and cobwebbed everything becomes. There's another room that contains magical plants, and that whole thing is accented with neon, so the film utilizes black lights to just make everything pop, so it's a really fun change of scenery. When Alex tells his stories, we get visual representations of them, and I really enjoyed the way that those were executed. They're a mix of live-action characters with these surrealistic backgrounds, and there's this grainy quality to the film, and then the characters are desaturated in color, and then they're set against this dark reddish background. Then they drop frames to give what we watch this creepy and unsettling feeling. I mean, it's kind of similar to an old film, but then also like modern horrors where the dropped frames create these jumpy and unnatural movements that are just disturbing. And I wish we would have had more of these because the aesthetic was unique and I thought it was executed really well. Now, Alex isn't the only one trapped in the apartment. He meets Yasmin, who's been trapped for a while, but has learned to do what is expected of her in order to survive. The way Yasmin's character is played creates some sense of intrigue and maybe even a little bit of mistrust to her, because there is this mystery at the center of the tale, and we don't know if she can ultimately be trusted. I mean, just like the witch. Now, the story is darker than I had imagined, and I think there is some imagery that might be a little too frightening for the younger audiences. The themes are pretty dark, especially with the concept that Alex has to write a new scary story each night or he dies. And the imagery might also be a tad much for the littles, despite this being TVPG. There is a cool creature that takes some prominence for an act, and it's designed really well. I mean, even if the CGI isn't always spectacular. It's got some really crazy features and causes some fun havoc for the characters. And while that may not be too creepy, there is a sequence in the final act that I thought was quite dark and even visually disturbing. A character is pretty freaky looking with some this creative makeup that's applied. And there's also a pretty gross exchange towards the end, which surprised me, but I also enjoyed it because it was unexpected. Now, the story is very familiar, but that didn't bother me. I mean, while there is some mystery attached, because this is more geared towards a family audience, the mysteriousness it's just not very complex. What becomes fun and even tense at times is the quest that Alex is on to try and find a way to escape. I enjoyed his internal dialogue where we get to hear his frustrations over having to come up with a story, but then he's also experiencing writer's block. Those conversations with himself provide some humor, and Alex is a charismatic character with effective timing and some good delivery. Now, some of the dialogue is a little cheesy, but the delivery is done well, and there are some short outbursts that did make me chuckle. Kristen Ritter took a little while to grow on me. I mean, at first, I thought she was more cringy than anything, but as the story went along, I began to enjoy her performance. She doesn't go fully over the top, but does become exaggerated just enough to create an amusing character. And rounding out the characters is this hairless cat named Lenore. She has this special ability, but what adds the most humor is the antagonistic relationship that she has with Alex. She's not really a fan of him, but we get to see Alex's heart shine through as he cares for the cat. 
He's determined to win her over, which gives us good insight into him. We see his longing for connection and friendship, and he's willing to take some abuse if he'll ultimately end up with an ally. And the same goes for his relationship with Yasmin. She's very standoffish, which is mostly out of self-preservation. Because she's been locked up for much longer than Alex, she knows the treachery and the danger that comes from the witch. And Yasmin knows how to play the game and survive, so she's not willing to rock the boat and put herself in danger. This also means that she doesn't get all chummy with Alex because his mess-ups could negatively affect her. Or if she gets attached to him and then something bad happens, she just becomes heartbroken. But Alex, searching for that companionship, he continues to reach out. He's trying to build an alliance. And this is a good message that comes across to the audience. We see some themes explored having to do with friendships from Alex's past, and I like that we get a balanced view, so we don't always just see either the struggles or successes of trying to make friends. The story is paced fairly well, and I don't think there were any portions that felt drastically uneven. It's 100 minutes long and was able to hold my attention just as the story would alternate between creepy, then mysterious, then action, and then back to creepy. And all the while, there's this small infusion of humorous moments to keep the tone from getting just extremely dire. Now, because this is geared towards the family audience, the story doesn't leave us in a dark state of mind, even though it does get fairly grim in that final act. There's resolution here, and as the story wraps up, our characters have grown, and then they've learned, and so we get to have a happy conclusion. So overall, Nightbooks is a fun story adventure with some good visuals and characters that do become endearing. We get to watch some growth from the players, and while this movie is meant for family viewers, there are creepy story elements that allow this to have some weight to the narrative that should provide enjoyment for a wide age range. I mean, if you're looking for hardcore suspense or terror, this isn't going to satisfy. But if you want a fun but dark fairy tale, I suggest you give it a try. One last note, there is a remake of the Lost Boys theme song that's played here, and it is just a great version. I mean, it took me a minute to recognize it, but then once I did, I thought it was wonderful. There's no sex or nudity, a little profanity, and a bunch of non-bloody violence. I give Nightbooks three and a half out of five couches. So as we get closer to October and Halloween, are there any spooky movies that you're looking forward to seeing? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.